South Africa will go to polls in just 15 days. This might be a turning point election for the country. South African President Cyril Ramaphosa on Monday rejected opposition allegations that a recent pause in electricity cuts was due to an election coming up on May 29th. The Democratic Alliance, the biggest opposition party, last week attributed the improved power supply to, quote, political interference by the ANC. It accused the party of putting pressure on ESCOM to keep the lights on. In 2023, Rolling power cuts imposed by state utility ESCOM reached record levels. They continued into the first quarter of this year. But there has now been no load shedding, as South Africans called the cuts, for 48 days, the longest period for more than two years. The dramatic improvement in power supply has led to accusations that the timing was designed to improve voters' satisfaction. Ramaphosa said ESCOM's improved performance showed that the government's energy plan, announced in 2022, was bearing fruit. He attributed the improvement to a renewed focus by ESCOM on maintenance, new generation capacity from renewables, and a strong take-up of rooftop solar panels. However, ESCOM's former CEO alleged last week that the utility is burning more diesel to increase supply. According to South Africa's energy regulator, in April alone, ESCOM had generated more than half of the amount budgeted for per quarter. South Africa's electricity minister denied the accusation. Unfortunately, power cuts are not the only problem on the water's mind. There are a slew of issues plaguing the country for years and are also under the spotlight in the upcoming elections. South Africa has one of the highest unemployment rates in the world. And young people account for more than half of the country's unemployed, with a rate of over 40%. The problem is now worse than it was at the end of apartheid. In 2023, the joblessness rate stood at 32.4%, nearly 10 points higher than in 1994. The root cause of the joblessness crisis is a sluggish growth, with the economy barely growing in more than a decade. Economic growth has averaged 0.8% since 2012. The debt-to-GDP ratio is projected to reach 74.1% in the current fiscal year, up from 63.35 years ago. Many South Africans believe that the greed of people in office is contributing to poor service delivery for everyone else. Known as state capture, the 2018 inquiry found that high-level corruption had been systemic in government during Zuma's years in power. Zuma himself denies any wrongdoing. Since taking over, President Cyril Ramaphosa has said tackling corruption was a priority. But opposition critics say his administration has done too little to stop the rot. Now, on top of the issue, there is a new controversial bill passed by President Cyril Ramaphosa. And that might become the latest problem on the voters' mind. Just days ahead of the May 29th election, Ramaphosa will be signing a national health bill on Wednesday, which is tomorrow. The ruling party says that it aims to provide universal coverage to South Africans, but the bill has already come under contention for not being feasible. Now, correspondent Kaldin Ongmo has more on this from Johannesburg. President Cyril Ramaphosa has finally found a pen to sign the controversial National Health Insurance Bill into law on Wednesday. As predicted, not everyone is happy with the announcement and reports are suggesting that some medical professionals might challenge this legally. The government has said this legislation will finally bring equality in the healthcare system for all South Africans, but many have cited the bill as an electioneering tactic from South Africa's ruling party, the ANC, and believe that following intense litigation, it might never see the light of day in its current form because some believe that this is financially not viable. This is Calden Olmo from Johannesburg, South Africa. For We On, World Is One. For all the latest news, download the We On app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.